Okay, this is a video about showing you uh, what, what we did with Logic Moo Mud that uh, made it useful or will make it useful and, and really easy to program. If you are new to Prolog, uh, then there's a couple, a couple tutorials that you probably want to do. And if you're not new to Prolog, these are tutorials you may have already done. If not, uh, then I suggest when you look at them, you're going to see uh, what Logic Moo Mud's all about. These are on the AMZ website. We didn't write these. These were written in uh, 1993. Uh, and published in PCAI magazine. What this, um, and what a lot of people who have done this tutorial will realize how perfect Prolog is for interactive fiction. And um, proof of that is, is, is with the declarative nature that we see in these database predicates, we're able to describe uh, this glyph of these connected objects. And I, we can say that the duck pen is next to the yard. Uh, the yard is next to a the house in the woods, and surely it is. Uh, we can say what objects are inside it, the location. Uh, that in the duck pen there are ducks and an egg. Uh, so this is kind of like saying noun, verb, object, noun, verb, object. Location being a state, being within that state is an, to me a verb. So the location of or is ducks are which is a version of B or is, so they are being at the location. So I justified why I could say verb or noun verb object in this, but uh, we might delete that off the video. Anyhow, so with this really small database, we're able to describe a small piece of the world. Uh, in Prolog, you're able to write things in a compiler in the simplified form, and a compiler compiles them, and it creates a program. Obviously, that's what compilers do. But it's an untyped language, and so we didn't have to declare that the word closed was something special and the lo word location was something special, unless you're prolog programming in Mercury or, say, Turbo Prolog, uh, which these people in 1993 might have actually done, is Turbo Prolog. Uh, you describe relations in Prolog using a rule, and that's what this connect x, y is. So what this rule says is x is connected to y when next to x is y. Uh, right here, and it is open. Uh, so, for example, a duck pen, a, y a yard is connected to the house because it's open, but the duck pen, pen is not connected to the yard because it's not open. It's closed in the situation. So, within this tutorial, they load these facts, and then they ask questions about the facts. Like they say, is the yard connected to the woods? Yes. Is the woods connected to the yard? Yes. Is what all is the yard connected to? All these different things. Um, was that? correct about the yard being connected to the duck pen? Evidently it was, at least in the database section right here. Okay, so um, there, since this is an interactive fiction tutorial, they want to create a verb called go to. And what go to does is it looks for the location of your body, figures out what's connected to it, tracks where you're trying, where you're, you're at, asserts where you're going. So when I say go to X, I want to go to X. And so it takes my location, makes sure I, I can get to X, it removes my location, and adds a new location, putting me at X, and tells me about it. If it was unable to, if this failed, which is the most likely uh, thing to happen, then it would write, you can't get there from here because they're probably not connected. So say probably not connected. But So the go-to command is an example of a verb implemented in Prolog. Um, we also have uh, predicates that help us understand the world. Like we want to find out if the gate is open in this particular duck world. Let's see, we have a gate right there. So we have a connection between the duck pen and the yard and it uses a gate. Up here no one actually mentioned the gate, but they are going to bring into existence the idea of a gate. And they do that by saying if the if there's an opening between the yard and the duck pen, then there is an open gate. If there is a closed um actually I, I tell a lie. What it's doing is asserting, if, you, if the player's mission was to open the gate, it would make sure that the gate is now open and the duck pen and the yard are next to each other and connected and it's open. If his mission was to close the gate, it would remove that openness or the closeness, whichever was there, and add the closeness to it. So this is another mud verb. And these are other mud verbs. We can chase things. We can take things. Okay. Um, also, uh, in this particular example, 
uh, they, they have this idea of daemons, which are processes that run all the time in the mud, or they run every so many ticks. Um, and what it does is uh, every time the ducks go tick, uh, it and it sees you in the same location in the duck pen. Um, okay, if the ducks see you in the yard, if you're in the yard and ducks are in the pen, the ducks and the, and the ducks can get to the yard. It'll remove the ducks from the duck pen, put them in the yard with you, and then uh, it'll let you know the ducks have ran into the yard with you. Um, okay, so send me just going totally over the code and just trying to show you how simply they've in this tutorial code is written to describe interactive fiction. So and that so that was this article. I'm going to take a peek at this article and see if it can be. Um, See, see what we can see out of here. So here's an example in this tutorial of creating a text adventure game. It starts you out in the kitchen where you see apple table and broccoli. And here's you playing the game. Um, and then through the rest of the tutorial, it actually allows you to write the game. And by the time you're done, I believe the game is only, let's see how many lines, probably not that many. OK, here's the entire game. Um, it's not. It's not oh yeah, actually, you know what? We were looking at two different programs, so uh, let's see here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this here, and um, here's the adventure game. Starts here called Nanny Search. Copy, and then we're gonna paste it into a new text file, and it is only 560 lines long. That was why I was facing to a text file here. Um, and if I take off that, it's only 514 lines long. OK, so uh, this is a prologue program that allows you to play a text adventure game. You've probably uh, writ written one in BASIC or an Inform 7. Um, this is not, it doesn't, won't feel as natural as Inform 7, obviously, because this is, wasn't meant to be that way. Um, what this does, though, is it shows you how simple the command parser is, has been written in. Uh, a winning situation, a quitting situation, uh, help command with the right. OK, so uh, but let's look at how, fun, how much fun this game was. Um, looks like someone was having a blast playing it. So and they were able to do that for these. 500 lines. So I would say I suggest do the tutorial so you get to get comfortable with what how a MUD or a text adventure game is written in Prologue. And then uh, here is the system on a mix of steroids and maybe a little bit of crack. Um, <laughs> okay, so Logic, so Logic Move MUD is simply these tutorials uh, gone wild and um, so, for example, we have the description. Um, we had ducks we saw in that one tutorial. Well, um, here are here's the decision-making system uh, that a duck might use. Uh, this, in this case, it's a monster and not a duck. Uh, to OK, so the call recording is on, evidently, and so we're starting in on uh, wherever we left off. So when we're looking at uh, the Logic New Mud source code, we're going to tie this back in. Hopefully, this thing recorded everything about the Nanny, Logic Moon or the Nanny tutorial. Uh, actually, let's see, while we're here, uh, let's go back to our tutorial for a second, uh, in case it didn't. OK, so we have this really fun looking game. and the source code for that was here, nice and simple. Um, it's actually very readable if you read Prologue. If you want to take something, it has to be here. It's got to be takeable. And then you move the thing from wherever it's at to having it. And now you now respond with, you now have the thing. That's very declarative. Well, Logic Move Mud is just basically almost the same thing. We just kind of add a predicate for if Joe wants to take something, we put agent take uh, thing, so is here, 
we might put something like agent is here and the thing is here. Uh, actually, thing, okay, is, we're going to say at loc, uh, at loc, we use find ring place, um, we're going to say at loc. And we're going to say the thing, I might say is a thing takeable, and then we're going to move the thing to possess a, to being possessed. Uh, you might say something like agent so it, so I want so the reason I just did that I wanted to say that from the nanny uh, code we can produce pretty quickly something that's compa more compatible with logic Numa. Uh there's further compatibility that we'll do or that's required for example uh, for the take command to be implemented, we have to uh, do something like this. We have to wrap it, and so it goes into our meta interpreter like that. And now, so any agents, whether they're written in English or if they're programmed in English or not, can now call the take thing. Um, so this agent tells the world it wants to take something, and instead of respond in this case, we might say d message. Actually, what we probably might want to say is event, uh, show event at the location, and then here's our event. Um, we said it in English. Um, I like to have this thing going on where most terms that are ever used in these predicates have a couple very easy to understand data types, like in the situation where we have this list here. Uh, this list is English. If we have a goal, that looks like uh, uh, now seen. Well, this is a term. Now seen agent. Uh, now seen take agent thing. Um, or actually in term form, termerized. So most of the time, when when we're going to see something in Prolog, it's a declarative version of, of something, we see something lists, we're going to pretend it's English. That's going to be true with like 90% of the source code when you see these things. Um, so like in this case, this is termerization. And, and one thing about termerization is we try to keep as much of the code working from this level and not from English. Uh, and then to convert back and forth to English, we are using a uh, definitive clause grammar. Here's how we understand verbs. Uh, transitive verbs mean it takes an object afterwards. So um, sit is a intransitive verb, and looking uh, means it doesn't take an object. Transitive verb takes an object. So if we drop something or take something, that is uh, transitive. Okay. So anyway, so we can say pick up sticks by uh, finding by using. Um, Let's see, so how did they do this? Okay, so a command is is a transitive verb plus a noun phrase. And that's, or a command could be simply an intransitive verb, or it could be a go-to type action. So for, uh, from this here, uh, actually I was thinking it was going to be smaller, so I was going to impress you with how little code went into the parser, which actually very little code did go into the parser. There we go. Um, that shows, this is the entire read eval print loop, reads command, executes the command. Um, this actually parses the command here. And, it, and this executes it. Uh, this is our termerization, make the command from a list structure. Oh, so what actually the way you get command works is it returns a command, but it re receives gets a list from the user, returns a term, that uh, form I was talking about, where we have a goal, a list to goal. And so that's a parser. Uh, allows for a few synonyms. Anyway, if you do the tutorial, you'll be able to understand uh, what's going on here. The, okay, so 
you probably afterwards realize how much mileage you got out of such a little work. Well, Logically Mud's premises, we're going to do that together in a large, massively online role-playing game um, where now we take that system and put it, uh, make it more complete and easier for people to share code. Um, and that's kind of what all this stuff says. Um, let's see here, what should go next? Okay, so here's the uh, Telnet system. I might, uh, I'm, I have a different video for using the Telnet system. Um, logged in, we're going to type help. These are all the commands uh, that a person can use. The command, the entire, this list of commands comes from several files that are read in using a wildcard. Uh, that the inside of source incoming. The reason I used incoming is is um, what I wanted to really specify in in the implementation of this is that multiple people can edit source code on on the internet for this thing. I want to create a command called. Uh, let's see, what are we missing here? Uh, let's look at the mud. We are missing hmm, aware aware command. We want to be able to wear things in the world. Uh, I started a where command, but I didn't well, actually have about a w-h-e-r-e -E command, where. I want to know in the world where something is at, at what's its location. So this would be a command, obviously. We're, we're cheating. We're going to want to type where uh, is Picard. Uh, we want to be able to actually have is, and we want to have a question mark at the end of our command. We want that to work now. That is our programming goal. So how long should it take us to implement this business? Uh, it should only, my guess is, since I know the code base, it'll probably take me less than five minutes to implement that. And so I look for a command that's somewhat simple, like uh, eat. That's, OK, so we'll take eat, and I'll save it as, OK, I'll we'll start the clock. It is 12.03 AM. Um, I want to have a where command. Where is type command. OK, so I'm going to change this module to where it. I'm going to call it where. Um, I want to have it. Uh, I, cut, I cut and paste quite a bit of my own code. Um, OK, so what this command is going to do is we're going to declare it to find us items. And this is going to be executable by anything. Uh, let's look at our declare action listing again. Move declare action agent. Uh, OK, so this is our default syntax that we want to use on here. So let's look at that. I'll we'll put this like this. Uh, OK, well, actually, OK, so this is how it, how it looks. OK, so we're going to use agent. We could use agent, but I think anything should ex execute the where command, because where command is kind of like cheating. Um, Let's see. Um, tells us where an item is, right? So the unboundness here means anything can uh, be in that argument place. And where is going to require an item? You know, uh, item is a subclass of object, which is also which is a superclass of actors. And we were actually wanting to know. We do, we do want to actually know where the actor John Luke Picard is, so let's do that. Uh, tells us where tells where actor is. Uh, and then maybe this is for the parser, and I'm going to well, you know, fix this later. Um, I want to know where, be able to know where actors and items where it are, tell where item is. But I'm not sure if our higher class hierarchy is implemented right, but if it was, I would implement I would do it like this. Where I wouldn't use these two lines. I'd simply use object uh, because people and items are objects. We're going to pretend that it works. So we're, I'm going to leave that object in there. And I'm going to say de declare subclass. And it's OK if, if multiple assertions are this way. Uh, subclass people, which are called actors, like this. Declare subclass actor of object and subclass item as being an object. So now this command, uh, if I only put this here and I left this here, technically this should work. But uh, I don't know for sure, so right now I'm just going to do this. I'm going to um, 
Yeah, we'll try that actually, but let's I want to see it work once before I we check the class hierarchy. Okay, so the command is where is something uh and so I'm going to say uh object match. Okay, actually the object that comes in should actually be a tangible object in the room. Um, not in the room, just someplace. This is actually a really simple command. At location, s object, uh, location. All right, now we're going to have a D message is usually for debug. Uh, we're going to D message uh, about. We're going to see something like a say, uh, commands uh, where. I'm just going to print this out. Like this. Okay. But like I said, D message is for debug, but I just wanted to get there. And so I'll delete this. And so if there is an object uh, where. Okay, so. Here we go. Oh, like I said, it's a web program thing. We're going to um, go online to the source code of. Uh, time was it 12.03 when I started? I think we're still at less than 10 minutes here, which was the goal. Um, OK, so I am going to go into incoming actions. I'm going to create a new file. Don't forget to start a project. Oh, I got to sign in in order to be able to add it, of course. Is this thing not remember my password? I guess not. Uh, I'm going to go in and establish our miles. OK, I am signed in. Uh, incoming. Actions, create a new file. Where's that button? Mm -hmm. uh, must be somewhere like here. See, if I knew how to navigate the site, that would actually be way more effective, right? Maybe that's a new button. Uh, is it only Git? I'm sure the site allows us to add new items. Create new, here we go. New, oh my goodness, why, oh, there we go, create a new file here. Okay, the name of this file is going to be, um, start command where, okay, dot pl, now we're going to paste our code in, there we go, and, okay. That should be good. Commit the new file. And now, it, inside of our game, uh, let's see, we should be able to go back into here, press Enter. Now, hopefully, you know, actually, the way it, we're going to say consult, uh, we're going to say prologue, consult. We're going to make sure our file is loaded. Consult. Uh, Logic new actions where. You know, I think I can do it this way without using an atom. Let's see. There we go. It loaded. So now I can say where the card. I can't use where it is, actually. I, I knew that. Uh, hmm. Okay, so you can see how it's probably an error here. Um, hmm. hmm. Okay, so the best goal is to choose where Picard at the string is. Okay, so what we might do, but that is, it kind of understood what we wanted to do. Where is Picard? Um, it's probably also in the same room that we're in. I want to type a look and see if, um, okay, we're going to do some, oh, Picard had left the room. Or no, we're in data's quarters. Different video. So, okay, let's look for the cat spot. Where is spot? And we'll, um, I forgot to put the uh, 
the is, make the is legal, and I want to show you how to do that. Let's do that right now, since I did say we're going to try to get the command implemented in the short time. Um, so this is about uh, how quickly we can do things. Let's see how I did the action parsing. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, all right. So there is a predicate for when we're being lazy called text command. And we might say where x, and we're going to parse that as where x. And we are going to interpret where is x as where x. How about where are? We could do this. Um, I'm going to call this B, and then because I don't want to keep, keep using the same boilerplate line member, uh, B, and all the forms of B is, is R B uh, were, is, is, an, okay, so those are our forms of B. So this would be uh, something that would where be Picard, or where is Picard. And you can see how simple that part of the parser was to extend. Uh, so how, where was I going to go? Oh, I wanted to show you something. Because we had added the declare action there, if I type the word help inside the mud, our new actions are there. Where are actors? Where are items? Uh, did I say we wanted the command to actually work, too? OK, so at this very moment, this is coming in as a string. We have objects in the world. And what I'm going to do is do something really lame, is I am going to look at every single object in the world. And if the object matches, uh, I hope we can subtract some of the time off of my uh, if you're timing me, not for this, but okay. So we want to connect uh, object matches, right? That's what I was going to do. Object matches. Object match. I'll take a peek at what the prototype looks like. Okay, so it's done by the string and the non-string. Uh, this type of code will only exist for a short time. So I'm going to take the stringified version of the object with the real object. And now I bet you are, um, I just fixed our predicate with that one line, I bet. Um, OK, so let's try it out. Where Picard, uh, I have to tell it to recompile. Where is Picard? Huh. What's going on here? I don't know if it's my flat, the flash or what. Okay, here we go. Picard is in the area so and so. That is where he's at. And you know what? I have the S object printed here. I'm going to go like that. I press enter, let it get reloaded, and I'm going to ask again. Okay, now it actually even tells us. Uh, oh, maybe it didn't load. Uh, I'll press that, enter, and let it reload. Um, you have to press save. Oh. No, I entered. There we go. OK, now we'll reload. All right, so here's how it works. Uh, we want something that is going to uh, notify back the requester. So what I, right now we've been using vMessage. We're going to go ahead and change that to format. Um, OK, so let's try it out here. We're going to go from a command, from a vMessage to a format. And so it says, it's almost the same thing. Um, we have a, something called a gen uh, phrase paraphrase maker that we can enter, uh, we're going to call it um, say. Mm. We're going to stick with format. And the reason why is, is we want to have one particular predicate that we use to communicate with the player with, except this predicate is going to be overloaded to say something like, 
and we're going to create a gen phrase off of this. Uh, moo declare gen phrase, how, uh, generate phrase, and it will be something like In regular prolog, this is called message string. Uh, so I prolog input. Uh, what we're doing is we are modeling, and we might actually just even use this predicate, uh, message to string. Uh, let's say message hook. Yeah, print message. OK. Let me see here. OK, so. Mm, let me see how we got our print message. Uh, well, they have an amplification here, system here. That's what we're actually looking for is, oh, message to string. OK. So Prilog has a way. I mean, we could, re we could reuse this uh, predicate, and I'm tempted to. Let's see how much it's been used already in the system. Listing, I want a listing of, or I want a prologue listing of message to string. Uh, why is this thing being slow? We don't know yet. Just did that before a moment ago, right? All right. Let's let it update. Okay, now we'll ask. All right. Uh, something that's going on. Okay, so what we'll do is message to string three. And what package is this exported from in Swipe Prolog? Uh, I bet it's under messages or debug, irregardless. Uh, it's a built in. OK, well, anyway, let's try it again. We'll Reconnect, and we'll have a. Also, run a, can run a local copy of the mud. Uh, oh, by the way, I we finished our command, right? Maybe we wanted it in better English, so maybe we're not quite done. Uh, it is in less than a half hour, I would believe. Singleton variable agent. I think I should. I keep thinking I'll fix it, and I don't. Let's fix that right there. Uh, okay, this is the mud. Again, uh, it says in our line 41 where, oh yeah, it's missing something. So we're going to use message to string where message. Um, OK, first of all, I want to get a listing of message to string to see how people already use it. Prolog, prolog. OK. All right, translate message. Um, Actions to format, and then print it in a format. OK, so actions to format is defined where I kind of like using the SWI prolog predicate instead of inventing my own. I'm sure Andy likes that too. Actions to format. Mm -hmm. so what's up here? Why am I not finding it? I mean, it's not defined, huh? Uh, let's see. I want to figure out, figure out uh, message to string. And I want to know what, see if this is legal. X, no, I didn't find X. OK, predicate property. I'll find out what module it's supposed to export that. None of them, huh? OK, what about message string? It's interpreted, built in. OK, imported from messages. OK, so what I'd like to do is a listing on messages and action to format. OK, there we go. Uh, this is how they define actions to format. And concat, OK. We don't have to do it this way, but OK, and that's part of messages. So what's the best way in Swipe Prolog to hook to install ourselves in here? 
a minute's message, okay. Uh, Okay, well anyway, using this particular format is what we are doing with our own uh, database here. So we're going to say, we're called Anglify. We're going to say term, we're going to call it term Anglify. It means convert it to English. So we're going to say term English. And I'm going to call it declare term Anglify. And it's going to be kind of like a hook predicate. At location, I might even be able to do it without a uh, body. Let's just do it as a fact. First, we're going to say this is how we interpret at location. Uh, and we interpret it this way. We say obj is at location. And when we, uh, we're going to change, we want this to be a noun phrase. As, object as, noun phrase. And then we are going to say location as noun phrases too. Uh, right, and is at, okay, so whenever we want to translate this term to English, we use this prescription to get it there. Um, now we also have to describe what, I just made up the word as. Part of this is, you know, this is probably going to be broken up into way more than just one whatnot, because um, what you're seeing is a design process the prolog programmer you know, uses. Okay, as a type, um, hmm, as a noun phrase. Okay, I'm going to leave noun phrase there. And I want this bracket never to fail. So I'm going to say the, um, I even the, let's say the, yeah, we'll use the object named the object we could say the object with token obj is at a location is object at okay so i'm going to use this as i'm going to add a cut to this because i have one here that's um creates a string okay and the string is going to be name strings. Okay, here's why I'm using name strings. Uh, because name strings tend to dictate things. So if Picard was in the turbo lift, it, the way we would say this, we would say turbo lift. So Kind of in a way. Okay, so name strings object some string. There we go. Okay, so um, that's how that's done. However, since rooms tend to have an XYZ coordinate with them too, uh, we're going to say that if the object is a region. And how do we do that? We look at our world in two dimensions, and we convert worlds to region. OK, find region, location to region. OK, so what we get from XYZs into region names, we use the location to region predicate. So I am going to take the, the OBG variable really didn't matter uh, that it's the same as the location variable. So I'm going to call this region, and I am going to make this predicate start over like this. Um, I want 
So if I find a location to region, I want to simplify that to simply the region, and now I'm going to anglify the region as a noun phrase, and I'll end up dropping the XYZ coordinates because that might not be appropriate in English. So that's important. Um, okay, so what I want to do is if a name strings are found, I don't want it to go on to using this particular default is said with the token. Um, uh, I also might want to capture type. Say something as a type. The object with type type with token token. Um, okay, that's how I say it. All right, so just these four assertions are going to allow me to speak English easier. Oh, I put the word where. Hmm. I might say command result where. Oh, it's so arbitrary, I know. Uh, but I just want to show you an example of how simple Prolog is to use. Command result of command is whatnot. And I will say, I'm going to anglify that as the command result of CMD is uh, what not? Okay. And so what happens is instead of printing the word whatnot, it's a variable, and so it's going to actually get resubmitted back into the anglifier. So hopefully it'll end up saying in the end. Uh, actually, before I even do the end, let's do this. We're going to create a small local. This is, let's say, moo, declare a term anglify. X, Y, and this is a wrapper interface to this X, Y. The reason why is because I have my reasons. I didn't even have to do it that way. No, sorry, I wasted time with that. Let's just do it correctly here. Okay, so I'm going to... This isn't quite correct, but I'm going to say there's a format E command, and what its mission is is to take a term and convert it to English. And so it does so by uh, checking to see if there's an anglification of the term. Uh, English mid. This video is probably going to end up being called something like a hour in the life of Douglas, but not necessarily tutorial video. But, okay, and then what we want to do is we want to take that English mid. We're going to have a predicate called fully expand English mid to English. Otherwise, okay, so fully expand, though, I may as well call it English for a term. This term is going to have to take terms. Okay, so I'll do it like this. English. Uh, okay, probably wondering why. Looks like I'm just cutting and pasting the same thing. It's because sometimes the way we write prolog looks a little bit like this. Yes, yeah. I'm going to call it English, and then I'm going to fully expand. The way we use fully expand is, yeah, fully expand T to E. And then I'm going to fully expand term to English. And... Uh, say that there is a fully expand default, and that is going to look like 
t to t. And OK, so if we're coming in to fully expand with a variable, we want to just sort of accept it as is. And actually, anytime it's not a compound, even a variable, we're going to go ahead and accept it as is. OK. Now, um, fully expand is going to have to re recognize situations of terms that can be anglified. I want that to almost be a default. Um, yeah, I want to, to see if there's not a compound there, and I might feel like expanding it, t to e. Uh, I believe that this predicate could get called by something using find all or something combinatoric. I kind of overguard my predicates, but green, is there anything called green cuts? This is a red cut. That's a green cut, I think, I hope. OK, so this is almost how I want fully expand to work. But you know, I want this part to be done differently. I'm going to call it out. I'm going to put append into English out. Uh, actually, I want to flatten append. Meaning, I think I have a predicate called flat and append. I don't know what's coming in here is going to be a list or not. Um, so I'm going to listify these two things and then flatten them. And then what's going to come out is that. So here's how flat and append works. We put flat and it takes first, last, and always um, be flatten first to first flat. And we do last to last. And we, then now we, now we get to use append. OK, here, here it is. Um, also, since I want to be able to submit atoms into this, I'm going to do this. Um, me and my favorite green cuts, because I don't want this thing backtracking. OK, so I, now that I added the braces around there, I can take these off. OK, so I'm going to be appending E with English, and that's going to create out. Fully expand, I believe, if it comes across this, its goal is to Goal when I'm calling fully expand is that it will only return when fully expanded. So therefore, I can believe that these two guys are going to fully expand something, I think. So let's see here. We've got our format E. And then from this part comes our English. OK, so we are going to format print English back to the user. And that should be what happens here. OK, so we're up to almost an hour. Let's see if we fully expand. It's got singleton variables. I believe it. OK, so let's see what we did wrong. TE. Didn't quite. They're just not grouped together. OK. Why are they not? I see. We got this one down here. Um, see what happens. OK, no warnings. That's probably correct. OK, so now we're going to ask, where is Picard? Let's see what, if. Where is Picard? The command result of where is at location Picard is here. OK, so we need the, whenever we come back with a term anglify, we need to fully expand the term anglify. That's what we're missing here. So we're going to say TA for term anglify, fully expand TA to E to English. Now let's try that. 
reload it in the game. Where is the card? All right, so uh, here it is. We had an error. We had a resource stack error. Okay, uh, it'll it'll re restart, and when it, I mean it's restarting automatically. We can't kill this thing. It's running in a VM. Um, okay, fully expand. I want to put a green cut there. You're probably if you're a prolog programmer, you probably see my programming error right now. I don't yet, but I will. Uh, figure it out here in a second. Okay, E to English. These things get appended. Got to have my overly green cut. Uh, okay, term anglify. That's right, I wanted it to take a default, but I didn't, so. Uh, declare term anglify. Sometimes I don't think I want to, I don't need cuts even though. Okay, so let's see that on the reloaded term, on the reloaded system, which is i take this and move it out of the way, so I don't keep alt-tabbing. Uh, okay. There we go. Alright, so let's see if we're back in the mud. I'll hit refresh, and so they will make us reconnect. Okay, so uh, where is the card? Uh, Alright. Crashed it again, stack. Call command. Explore where is Picard. Okay. So let's here we got first last. Is that spill? Yeah. Correct. Um These are all terms, these are all lists. Um Okay, so Let's see here. I'm gonna look right make and we'll reload. Fully expand. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, I'm gonna put this here. Uh, it's possible a variable slipping in somehow. Oh. Okay. And the other thing is I can go D and type debug. This is why sometimes you want to have a local server for a lot of debug. And now I'm going to say where is the card? And now hopefully it'll let me fix the error. Yep. Okay. So the error was resource stack. Now I'm going to say leap. And hopefully if I'm tracing correctly, Nope, I'm not. Um, I'll be able to trace it down. So let's do that. So what I'm going to be looking for here is when that number on the left-hand side starts to grow faster than it should. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Right, say it gets up to 90, then we know that we're lost in space. There it goes. Um, you know, I think I can get away with going up. Okay. Uh, there's our atomic list king cat. Uh, that's okay. I think we're still in our parsing code, so I'm going to say up, up, up. Okay, here we are. What is the exception? This is we actually already uh, created the ex we're already in the exception code where we are looking for. Yeah, it's okay. I'm gonna type tilt leap TikTok. Okay, where is Picard? Uh, looks like we have a few enter keys in the queue. 